How much is the 2022 Kawasaki Ninja H2 SXSE Tourer? It starts at £25,329. Just one color scheme is available which is the recognizable Kawasaki Green, though more scientifically known as Emerald Blazed Green, Metallic Diablo Black, Metallic Graphite Gray, but that's quite a mouthful. Three other models are available in the range the H2 SXSE A Performance Edition. This one the Tourer. Then there's a Performance Tourer. For those who deem a three-year PCP deal as the best option, then stick £5,000 down with 5,000 miles per year as your max and the monthly repayments will come in around £270. Feel free to tinker with the K-Options calculator for a personalized quote. Right then let's get straight to it. If you've got this far you'll know the key figure is 197.3 bhp at 11,000 revolutions per minute, followed by the slightly more nerdy 101.3 pound-feet at 8,500 revolutions per minute. Mighty figures I'm sure you'll agree. Considering the peak torque figure of Ducati's astonishing Panigale V4S is a mere 91 pound-feet, you realize the booming capability of this 267 kg Japanese projectile. But it's not apparent when you shuffle off through town and out into the wilds for the first time. Its behavior is docile and well-heeled, and it wasn't until I found an appropriately quiet stretch did I discover the wild side and the key figure is not 197.3 bhp, but the peak torque placement of 8500 revolutions per minute, that's where the action is. But this is no irresponsible, apple cart upsetting, jail hungry crotch rocket. Kawasaki has been supercharging its motorcycles since 1984 and after a little break, their 21st century resurgence came via the spectacular H2R in 2015, and so the Mark has been fine-tuning its four-cylinder booster for enough time to house it appropriately and to avoid lag of any kind, on or off throttle as one might expect from the automotive turbochargers of the 80s and 90s. These two distinct characters docile and rambunctious aren't split by a hair's width, there's no obvious switch, kick or power band. It's much more subtle but be warned. The subtlety of that addictive amount of horsepower can soon get you into mischief be that with the Rosers, a hedge or the aforementioned wildlife, tourists and tractors. It's deceptively quick and all too often a quick glance at the new TFT screen had me rolling off to a more respectable speed. Though get in the zone and there's few bikes as memorable for the pure enjoyment of making significant progress. These Kawasaki engineers must have two very different production lines in the manufacturing plant, one for the sensible fours and twins, while the other is reserved for the slightly wilder motors, it's a company not afraid to rock the boat. For a big and long girl, weighing in at 267 kg with a 1480mm wheelbase, my concern immediately springs to low speed stability as well as shuffling it around in the garage, petrol station or car park. A sizable proportion of the bike is carried over the front end with the handlebars and riding position noticeably set back to bring the center of weight more. The nose of the bike sticks out beyond the front axle, though the handlebars clipped onto and rising up and back from the top yoke, are set behind the front tire resulting in an ambiguous feel from the front. I wanted to trust it more than I could which isn't ideal when throwing it into a turn, tighter corners are a struggle. In contrast the longer corners are where the bike excels that wheelbase and weight working in unison to offer compliant, comfortable curves. Styling wise I'm sort of taken, mainly because it's different to everything else, the flow of go faster or aerodynamic lines on the fairing and color combo of the panniers does set the bike off nicely while the smart touches including the keyless ignition and indicators set into the mirrors are neat. For the extra money the SE comes equipped with electronic suspension with handy pre-load adjustment through the ye old switch gear making it a doddle to sort if you're needing a little propping up at the rear should a pillion or some luggage find their way on. Meanwhile the semi-active damping reads the road well and although each riding mode has their own presets, I still found the rebound a little too sharp over the bumpier sections in sport and even road mode.
I set off on a ride to see how far one full 19-liter tank could get me. With road mode selected the fancy TFT display revealed a 180-mile range. One hour later with 45 fairly sedate miles covered and the range was just 11 miles lower at 169. My route was from home in Whittlesea trundling around the North Norfolk coast towards Cromer and headed inland and homeward bound. The first half was calmer than the second and fortuitously a whole fuel tank's worth had taken me on this 180-mile loop with the range reading. For the final two miles before pulling into the petrol station, the fuel light came on with 35 mile remaining. That original 180 mile range prediction had turned out to be super accurate too, and to prove the bike had nothing but a few fumes left in it. I managed to squeeze 18 liters in which at 199.9 per liter turned out to be a 36 pounds fill up. The result was 43 mpg versus the 52.3 mpg claimed by the manufacturer. Well, they can't claim it has to be an accurate figure for homologation purposes but either way, if an economy figure of 50 plus is on your tick list, then the performance, this particular Kawasaki model's USP will remain redundant. The Tourer model has a one-key pannier system fitted which not only makes the bike look better with its matching color scheme and sleek appearance, but the 2x28-liter cases are dead easy to use or remove too. The system is available as an optional extra for around 850 pounds, and a set of inner bags at 89 pounds. The ignition and steering lock are keyless replaced by a fairly crude plastic knob to turn, while the panniers and fuel cap require the key. A center stand comes as standard which is a welcome addition for chain maintenance, while the key additions to the 2022 bike are the trio of electronic goodies already mentioned, front collision warning, blind spot detection and adaptive cruise control. All three are the type of accessory you don't think you need until you've used them, a bit like standard cruise control or abs. I had plenty of experience with the Ducati Multistrada V4 SACC which was excellent, just like Kawasaki's version anything above 15 miles per hour and whether you're in town, country or motorway, the bike will sit at the required distance from the vehicle in front. Blind spot detection adds a safety net to the lifesaver it would not replace, working with a rear sensor to offer a small orange warning triangle in the relevant mirror depending on which side the vehicle behind is approaching. Though with a 197 bhp supercharged four-cylinder at the call of your right hand, I can't see that symbol showing itself regularly. 